Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so our presentation on our research was about making a toolkit to help students to tackle multi-mark measurement questions. Um, and this project was done by uh, teachers at Greater Brighton Metropolitan College and Chichester College and Crawley College. So the reason we chose this topic was, as we all know, working in maths, um, there's a big problem with maths anxiety in the UK. And the QMaths Global Math Survey last year found that over 41, oh, sorry, over 40% of 14 to 15 year olds reported that they had an overall negative perception of maths. And we know working in FE that most of those students have probably come and are sitting in our class. Um, through our own experience, our colleagues' experience and the literature, we found that, um, as everyone here today is probably saying, one of the big problems that students face is when they have to answer a problem solving question, which has a series of steps. Um, so that's what we decided to look into. What we did, just a quick overview, was in cycle one, we just aimed to explore and understand the problem a bit more. In cycle two, we designed an intervention and we tested it. And then in cycle three, we reviewed the um, intervention, the toolkit that we made, and then we retested it. So I'll tell you a bit more about those in a bit more detail. So for cycle one, we surveyed teachers and students. And what we did was we gave um, them, we used a, problem, a typical GCC math problem solving question. Um, teachers, we said to teachers, what, you know, what do you think about this type of question? And we asked them a series of questions. I'm just gonna go over a few of the main findings. 100% um, of the teachers surveyed agreed, and we had 13 teachers answer the survey. 100% agreed that research students generally encounter difficulties when they answer these types of questions. And we also found, which was quite interesting, was that 77% of the teachers said that they found it challenging to teach problem solving skills. We then asked the students um, similar sort of questions around, sorry, questions around a similar GCSE exam question. And we've asked them like how likely they were to attempt it. We found that 20, oh sorry, we asked uh, 69 students was our sample size here. And they were GCSE students, uh, grade three mainly, but a couple of grade twos. What we found from the student feedback was that 22% said they would not attempt it, 54% said they might, and 24% um, said that they would. Um, we also asked them how they felt about the question. 57% said they felt anxious, 32 said they didn't feel anything, and 11% said that they felt fine. Just a quick um, insight here. What was, we found really interesting was that although 78% said that they either would or might attempt it, when it actually came to them answering the question further on um, in the activity, um, only five students out of the 69 were actually able to make significant progress on the question. And we found that this was interesting because it showed us that the majority of students were actually in theory, willing to try the question. They weren't just completely shutting down, but that they didn't have the tools or the skills or the knowledge or, well, we try to find out what it was that they didn't have um, to actually successfully answer the question. So what we did then with the students um, was this was before any intervention. It was just cycle one where we were exploring. We asked them to, given, I'll show you the questions in a sec, but we asked them to identify the parts of maths or the math topics in the questions. We then asked them what information they knew from reading the question. We then asked them to explain in their own words what they're trying to find out. And then we asked them what steps they would follow and they had a go at answering the question. So we used two different uh, questions across the colleges just because of where we were in our schemes of work. I'm just gonna show you them quickly. This is the one question that was used by Crawley and Chichester College for cycle one. So um, it's, we won't spend too much time on the actual question, but basically just as I go over the results, it might just be a good idea to have a quick look. Um, so they were given the ratio and the trick here was to realize or elicit that the biggest angle, which was worth five parts in the ratio was the right angle. So that was a tricky question. And then the um, Greater Brighton students did this question, which required them to make um, an equation uh, with the three angles in the triangle and then solve it. So what we found, um, I'm just gonna go over this quite quickly, um, was when they were asked to identify the parts of maths, um, the Crawley and Chichester students 
where most of them, as you can see, said ratio or angles. Um, just one thing that's quite interesting, and it came up again with the, Bright the Brighton students, was that even though it says right angle triangle and three angles of the triangle, so few, so so few, uh, there were so few instances of tri a triangle being mentioned. If we look at the Brighton students' responses, um, most say angles, but again, very, very few say triangles. And in order to solve both these questions, you have to use the 180 degrees um, of the three angles of a triangle. So that was just really interesting. Um, we then asked them what information they know from reading the question. Um, I think we may not have worded this very well because they took it quite literally reading the actual worded question. So most students here, um, for this question said right angled and they mentioned 90 degrees, which was the key point. So that was positive. Then we looked at the Brighton students and um, they literally just said the size of the angles. What was quite concerning here was that although this question actually had the diagram, um, they didn't mention triangles or more specifically right angle triangles, which you know the 90 degrees was obviously key to answering this question. We then asked them, um, rewording the question, what they were trying to find out. Students were able to do this quite well on the whole, though they did just focus on, again, this may have been our wording of our question, they did just focus on the main question at the end. So most students here yeah, said they were trying to find two or three angles. And for the Brighton students, um, they said the size of sent of um, angle A, but they didn't go into any more depth of say, you know, maybe finding B and then finding A or anything like that. Um, when we asked them what steps they would follow, this is when things started to, we started to see some blank spaces. Um, most students uh, for this question left the question blank, although they did have some idea. Um, there were a few that mentioned 180 and dividing, even though it wasn't necessarily correct, but they were kind of going along the right path. The Brighton students didn't know, didn't make the link to algebra. Only one student mentioned algebra, and so they weren't sure what to do. So they kind of, if either didn't either left it out or wrote some things which were more general, such as breaking the question down. What we then did um, was look at their attempts at answering the question. I'm just going to go through this quite quickly. Um, so the, these students, a few of them tried, um, only um, six solved it correctly. The Brighton students, only one um, was able to um, answer it correctly. Um, and they really were stuck with the algebra. They, they hadn't got the forming and solving the equation. Um, we then, in terms of our intervention, we looked at um, what the research said and we saw that the problem solving to, in order to solve problems in math effectively, um, these four elements are needed. So we tried to design our toolkit to uh, accommodate each of these elements. Um, what we did was we did a, we used um, three different sections to our toolkit. We used a formula for a formula tool. So this would help with those algebra questions. Um, obviously it would be good if students had had some practice at um, actually uh, substituting an, into formulas and solving equations. We then gave them a, in terms of trying to address the metacognitive element of problem solving, we gave them these steps and the sheet. Um, and then we gave them the formulae on this uh, mind map or crib sheet. We um, had 52 students that took part in this. What we did was we modeled the use of the toolkit through a worked example on the PowerPoint, and then students used it on a series of questions um, with some help from their teachers, and then they tried one on their own. What we found was that almost all students engaged positively with the toolkit, a very small number, and this was mentioned also um, with the KFC thing um, in the earlier presentation that some students said, no, they didn't need it, they had their own strategies, but this didn't necessarily lead to the correct answers. Um, what we found was that um, when we looked at their, um, their answers to the, the questions and the attempts, we found that um, the most useful thing was step three and four, that kind of gave them the best sort of in to the question. Just a very quick example here with this question. Um, if they'd done that the left-hand side was 12 and then elicited the right-hand side was 12 and then that that was the diameter, they got the radar and then they were able to substitute into a formula on quite a difficult question, which may have previously been left out. We also found that 
as we found in cycle one, um, listing the parts of maths was extremely problematic. Students didn't do that well at all. Um, they didn't make links between topics. Again, as mentioned earlier, that linking in the scheme of work is so, so important. Um, just a quick example, um, of the 12 students who tried this question, um, only two identified surface area and cylinder, which are vital to um, answering the rest of the questions. And then we found, I found that with the, with the 12 students in this particular group, there was an issue with actually knowing whether they were doing area perimeter volume or surface area so straight away the starting point they weren't accessing so based on that we revised the toolkit slightly we put the um which measure first then got them to write down the formula and then the same steps as before um i also thought um well we found that um their previous crib sheet was a bit too busy for students so we made four mini cards rather than a mind map and then um this tool is sort of a flow chart to help students to see whether which measure they're likely to be using um, and then just a quick some quick uh, findings from cycle three we due to the time of year um, and the advanced information from the exam boards GCC students were very much focused on going over those topics lists so did a um, we tested this version of the toolkit on six functional skills students who had passed entry three and then a separately on eight GCC students who were exempt. And what was really interesting was that they engaged really positively, especially the functional skills students in terms of the flow chart, they loved it. Um, they did really, really well, um, almost even better, I would say, than the GCC students that I'd worked with before. Um, and we found that um, unsurprisingly, probably because there's a lot of this sort of stuff in functional skills, they were able to do the first four steps really well and then needed some help with the algebra at the end which is completely understandable. Um, what we can say now after this research is that students were much more willing to attempt the questions than we expected. Um, there wasn't a lot of resistance to trying, which was a really positive thing. We also thought, found that, as I mentioned earlier, that although they were interested in trying, they just didn't still sort of didn't know where to start. Um, and the toolkit helped to address that. Definitely, we found a very, it was very positive, but. Um, we do think that we needed to use it earlier in the year and much more often, as is always the case with um, introducing something new, such as bar models or ratio tables or whatever, they need to get used to using it. So ideally, we would have done more, um, you know, get them to try it more within the cycle. And also, what was really interesting was that going back to that 77% of students, I'm sorry, of teachers who felt that they found this problematic to teach. The teachers who did use the toolkit found it to be a very valuable teaching tool and something that we're definitely going to build on next year. Um, and that's it.